Hello friends, this video on control and coordination part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So we will now talk about the nervous system in Animalia Kingdom. So now we are talking about, we will be talking about the nervous system in different animals. So human being is one of the animals, but in Animalia Kingdom, we have many other classes of animals, right? So we will see how this nervous system actually evolved. In the in very lower classes of animals, actually there was no nervous system at all. So it gradually evolved with time. So as we go into higher, more complex and advanced animals, the advanced and more complex is the nervous system. So when I talk about the first life forms, maybe the unicellular organisms, which were made up of one cell. So there is no question of nervous system because one cell is going to perform all the necessary functions. So there is no concept of tissues, no concept of organs, so no concept of organ system. And that is why there is no concept of nervous system as well. Now when I talk about the Animalia Kingdom, these are some of the classes which we will be talking about. Porifera, Cylentrata, Platyhelminths, Nematodes, Annelids, arthropods, mollusks, echinoderms and vertebrates. So these are some of the classes which we have talked about when we uh, learned the lesson diversity in living organisms in class 9th. So we have studied about the characteristics and properties of each of these classes. So now we will look at the nervous system in each of these classes. So how the nervous, we actually want to get an idea about how the nervous system was simpler in the previous animals and gradually with complexity, the nervous system also became more complex and advanced. So let us start with the nervous system in Porifera and Cylentrata. So what are Porifers? Porifers were the sponges. Right? So these porifers were the simplest of the Animalia kingdom and they did not have any nervous system at all, like sponges. The next class was the cylindrates. So cylindrates had a nervous system, but it was the simplest nervous system of all. So the simplest nervous system of the Animalia kingdom was in the cylindrates. So when I talk of cylindrates, remember any of the cylindrates? Hydra. So while we talk about these different types of animals, we will also see that in different organisms, the means of carrying the information was also different and also the means of recognizing the external stimuli was different. That means the receptors were different and also the, the means by which the information was carried in a nervous system. For example, in human beings, we have nerves. So in different animals, we have different organization of nerves. So we will see that as we go ahead. So in cylindrates, let's talk about cylindrates now. They had nerve nets carry information from sensory to muscle cells. So they had these nerve nets. What are nerve nets? Many nerve cells linked together to form nerve nets. So small nerves all grouped together and they form net like structures known as nerve nets. So what was the purpose of these nerve nets? They used to carry information from the sensory cells to the muscle cells. Sensory cells are nothing but the receptors, right? So where did they have receptors? They had receptors all around their body. At the same time, they had nerve nets also scattered around their body. Brain is absent. So there was nothing called as brain like how we have in human beings. So there was no concept of brain. There was no separate brain. No cephalization. What is cephalization? This is a new term for you. Cephalization is nothing but the concentration of nervous tissue towards one end of an organism. Let me explain these things taking example of human beings because then you will be able to understand it better. Like in human beings, if you see brain is a part of the nervous system, a cardinal part actually. So if you see brain and the sensory organs like eyes, ears, nose, they are all concentrated towards one end of the body, like everything is there towards our head. And this one end gradually resulted in the formation of head region with sensory organs, right? So this process was known as cephalization, that is concentration of nervous tissue towards one end of the organism. And that one end house, houses the nervous tissues as well as the sensory organs and that became head. 
in due course of time. But in, when cylindrates were there, that time they are one of the simplest organisms with simplest nervous system. So they just had nerve nets to carry information. There was no brain. There was no cephalization. That means there was no concentrate. It was not that the nerve nets are present only at one end of the body. So the nerve nets were scattered all around the body. So there was no concentration of the nervous tissue towards one end. So in Hydra, nerve nets are present throughout the body. So what did I say? What is cephalization? Cephalization is concentration of nervous tissue towards one end of the organism. Nervous system allows them to respond to physical contact. That means whenever you touch this organism, it will respond. That means it will move. It will show some, some kind of movement. However, it doesn't allow it to recognize the point of contact or the point of touch. For example, if you touch this hydra here or you touch it here or you touch it here, the movement in all the cases will be the same. That is, the response in all the cases will be the same because the output is produced by the muscle cells, right? So the muscle cells will give the same output because, why? Because the nervous system is not that advanced that it can actually sense the point of contact. So the nervous system is not able to understand where exactly it is touched. For example, in case of human beings, if somebody... If, if somebody pinches you on your cheeks, what will you do? You will try to remove his or her hand from your cheeks, right? Now, if somebody pinches you in your hand, so you, your movement in this case will be different. You will try to move that person away from your hand, right? So, your movement in both these cases were different. Why? Because the point of contact was different in both the cases. But in case of Hydra, they do not recognize where it was touched because it, it is not that advanced. The nervous system is not capable enough to recognize the point of touch. So even though it responds, but it responds in a similar way irrespective of the point of touch. So we say that it cannot detect the source of stimulus. So from where the stimulus actually came, that means for example, in human beings, if somebody pinches you on your cheek, so that pinch is a stimulus that is making you react, correct? So you know the source of stimulus, that is a pinch on your cheeks. But here, they do not know the location of the stimulus from where the stimulus actually originated, right? So this was one of the simplest nervous system which was present in the cylindrates, that is, and the best example would be hydra. Let us look at the next class, that is platyhelminths. Let us now talk about the nervous system in platyhelminths. So in, let us take the example of planaria. So planaria belongs to platyhelminths. So here, if we compare with the cylindrates, the nervous system is little more organized. So we started with porifera where there was no nervous system. Then cylindrates where there was a nervous system, but it was very simple and very less organized. So now in platyhelminths, the nervous system is little more organized. Cephalization is present. So that means here we have the nervous tissues and the sensory organs all accumulated towards one end and that gives rise to a head region. So we have something called as head here. So if you look at this picture of uh, planaria, you can see that this region comprises of the head where you have the sensory structures that is the eye spots here you can see the eye spots and you also have a brain like structure here. So the nervous tissues and the sensory organs are accumulated towards one end of the organism so we can say cephalization is present. They have a ladder like nervous system so that sounds interesting again ladder like what do we mean by ladder like? Let's have a look. Two long nerve cords run throughout the length of the body. That means we have two long nerve cords. So this is the length of the body. So there are two nerve cords which runs throughout the length of the body. This is how the two nerve cords run. 
so these are the two nerve cords transverse nerves connect the nerve cords so now not only these nerve cords there are also transverse nerves present like this so in this fashion so now does it resemble somewhat like a ladder so this is how a ladder looks like right it has steps one after another so these are the transverse nerves so due to this appearance we say that it has a ladder like nervous system simple brain or ganglia present in the head region under the eye spots so you can see here we have the eye spots these two which you can see they are nothing but the eye spots now just under the eye spots we have a simple brain that is ganglia the simple brain is named as ganglia how is ganglia formed it is nothing but it is formed by a bundle of nerves so a bundle of nerves get accumulated together to form a simple brain like structure which is known as ganglia so where is this ganglia present it is present just under the eye spots right now this was all about the means by which the information is conducted so here the information is passed through these nerve cords and the transverse nerves and this ganglia acts as the brain now what are the receptors present here so what are the receptors that they have that means what are the organs that they have which are used to sense the stimuli so for that they have the eye spots which act as the photoreceptors that is they can sense light so these two eye spots which we see here the two pigmented areas in head that are sensitive to light so they are like eyes like the eyes we have in human beings so similarly they have these eye spots they also have auricles present at the base of the head which is sensitive to touch and certain chemicals so that means these auricles act as tango receptors and chemo receptors so where where is this auricle so it's at the base of the head so this is the upper region of the head which we are seeing now at the base of the head somewhere here we have the auricles so these auricles also act as tango receptors and chemo receptors so now you understand how different organisms have different types of receptors right like human beings as tango receptors what do we have we have skin right so similarly here auricles act as the tango receptors so this was about the nervous system in case of platyhelminths thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again